Hello, everyone. Welcome to our conference today. We'll give it a couple of minutes for some folks to file in, and then we will get started. Welcome everyone. We will get started in just a couple of minutes. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's Living Well with a Blood Cancer virtual conference. Unexpectedly pausing some of your life goals as you confront a blood cancer diagnosis may cause you a great deal of worry. When you're out, in or out of treatment, or navigating a chronic blood cancer, taking care of your health and well-being are especially important. Throughout the week, we offered interactive presentations and expert-approved tools, tips, and recommendations to improve your quality of life so that you can live well with or after a blood cancer. We are already at the last conference of this week. Thank you again, once again, for joining us. Let me introduce myself. My name is Alexandra Clark, and I'm the Community Services Manager for the Western Region of Ontario here at the LLSC. I will be the host of this online event. This presentation will last approximately 60 minutes and will include a question and answer period at the end. Since there are many of you, we invite you to type your questions in the comments section in the question box of your Zoom webinar panel throughout the presentation. An LLSC staff member will monitor the questions. I will read some of your questions aloud at the end of the presentation during the question and answer period. The conference will also be recorded, therefore you can listen to it again on our website. Before we begin our main presentation, I would like to share with you our mission and highlight some resources that might be helpful for you or someone you may know. Next slide, please. At the LLSC, our mission is to cure blood cancers and improve the quality of life of those touched by a blood cancer and their families. We offer guidance and support every step of the way. The community services managers across Canada can help. They are compassionate connectors that can help you cope with your blood cancer experience. Please do not hesitate to contact a community services manager in your area. They can be reached by email at info at bloodcancers.ca or by calling toll free at 1-833-222-4884. Next slide, please. The LLSC has many free services to help you through a blood cancer experience. One service is our peer support program. It is a support service that matches people affected by blood cancer caregivers and their families with trained volunteers who have been touched firsthand by a blood cancer and share similar experiences. Whenever possible, participants and volunteers are matched based on their age, gender and diagnosis or the issue that is most concerning to you. Next slide. On our new website, bloodcancers.ca, you will find a variety of educational resources and support services. For example, there you can access free booklets and fact sheets containing information about specific blood cancers, treatments, and practical information. You can also find short animated educational videos, past webcast recordings, as well as access many of our podcasts. Next slide. It is now my pleasure to introduce our conference speaker for today, managing how you look and feel during and after a cancer treatment. Sometimes the best medicine doesn't always come in a bottle. Look good, feel better, knows this, and is dedicated to helping women with cancer feel like themselves again. Learn some tips and techniques to take care of yourself and to feel empowered. Emily Price from Look Good, Feel Better will show us what to expect in a workshop and how they are designed to help women learn to manage the impact of cancer and its treatment on their appearance in a supportive and welcoming environment. Emily Price is the manager of programs on the, at the Ontario region, Look Good, Feel Better. Starting at LGFB in 2017, she was inspired by what she saw in the workshops, the power of community and how important it is to feel like you aren't alone when going through a cancer. 
Emily sees firsthand the magic of what happens when people come together in a workshop, and she is so pleased to be able to share that with you. Over to you, Emily. Thanks so much, Alex. Um, it's really my pleasure to be here today. I'm going to talk about the Look Good, Feel Better program and how we are here to help. That we understand that feeling good in your own skin is an important part of well being. And uh, like Alex mentioned, that we see firsthand how self care can have positive impacts in how we feel. So let me tell you a little bit about who we are at Look Good, Feel Better. Um, we are a registered national charity that was started in 1992. And we're actually the only organization that is uh, exclusively focused on dealing with the appearance related side effects of treatment. Um, now, normally we would be offering programs in over 110 different cancer centers across the country. Uh, with COVID, we've had to pivot, um, uh, but I'll tell you more about that uh, later. Um, our program is delivered entirely by volunteers. Uh, this is makeup artists, estheticians, uh, wig fitters, and there's 1,300 in total. Um, and uh, our program is um, offered to all women facing all cancers, and going through any type of treatment. So here's a, a snapshot of what we talk about in the workshops. I'm gonna get into more detail um, shortly, but before I do, I'm going to show a video that um, highlights how Look Good, Feel Better has impacted the cancer experience for some of our participants. When you're going through cancer, you look in the mirror and you really don't recognize yourself and you have all of these doubts. Going through the treatment when you lost your hair, you no longer look like yourself, you start to identify yourself as a cancer patient. The day that it actually all fell out, I was in the shower and I just, I bawled, like I just cried and I cried because you look so different. After attending the Look Good, Feel Better online workshop, I felt more confident and I didn't feel was alone. Everything is so focused on treatments and doctor's visits. Like it's nice to have a change of environment where it's focused on making yourself feel good. When you are able to get control over the way you look, it's the only thing that you feel like you have control of. Even though we all had different types of cancer, we could just relate to each other and feel beautiful and confident. At the workshop, you're not a cancer patient. You're seeing yourself. When you that video always gives me goosebumps uh, when I hear it. And I, I really do believe that the part, uh, the women who've experienced the program are the best to talk about how um, they were impacted. Let me tell you a little bit of um, what we're doing now, um, we've, how we pivot, pivoted during COVID. Our workshops are now online. Um, the traditional two hour in-person workshop has been divided up into different topics. We have skincare and cosmetics, wigs and hair alternatives. Uh, we have a workshop specifically on breast care forms and garments, and then a standalone workshop for teens who are undergoing treatment. This provides flexibility um, to pick and choose which topic is of interest to you and which is uh, relevant as well. Um, you can choose how you want to participate whether you want your camera on or off, um, whether you're going to follow along with the steps or just watch, or even if you'd like to bring a loved one to um, sit with you and, and uh, um, observe, you have that choice. We're really proud to be able to continue to offer programming um, during this time because cancer is already isolating as it is without this added challenge of social distancing, uh, which we know has impacted that circle of care, whether it's at home or um, in the hospital. We've had great feedback from the workshop with 93% of women um, saying that they would recommend the online workshop to another woman with cancer. 
So our skincare and cosmetic workshop uh, covers the, the following topics. I'm gonna get into a little bit more detail um, right after, after this. Um, you can see here the, the photo of the kit. I've got it uh, right, right in front of me. Um, so this kit is provided um, to anyone who, to everyone who attends uh, our skincare and cosmetic workshop. The kit is shipped directly to you. Uh, there are four different shades and you'll specify which shade uh, when you register for the workshop. Um, this is an example of the types of products you will see. The brands might vary um, a little bit, but you'll um, see we have a cleanser, a moisturizer, we have a soothing and repair balm, a body balm, a foundation, concealer, blush, mascara, eyeshadow, uh, eyeliner, eyebrow pencil, lip balm, and uh, lipstick. Something we talk about um, a lot in the workshop is cosmetic hygiene. You can see we have some disposable applicators there. I'll go into a little bit more detail about which, uh, what each one of them does. Cosmetic hygiene is important all the time, but when you're going through treatment and you have a compromised immune system, it's so important that you are taking some extra precautions to make sure that you're keeping your products free from contamination. Um, this means during this time, we advise that you put your makeup brushes, your beauty blenders, um, and any other of those types of reusable applicators to the side and move to disposable applicators um, for like a one-time use. You can get these disposable applicators at uh, the dollar store, at uh, a pharmacy, beauty supply store, or online. The idea with using disposable applicators and one-time use is that you're keeping your products clean, that should you have any debris or bacteria on your face and um, you're using the disposable applicator to apply product, what you don't want to do is then take any debris or bacteria from your face and put it back, put it into your clean product. So what it, that is what the disposable applicators allow um, us to do in keeping the product clean. Oh, I'll, I'll show. Oh, I can't find my, my spatula, but at least I have a picture of it right uh, in that wooden in the top right hand corner. Um, spatulas are used when you have a container. And instead of opening up and putting your hand in the container, the spatula is used to remove some product. With containers, you want to be careful that uh, you're not opening it up and putting the lid face down on the table um, because of any bacteria that, that could be on that table. Now, really, we recommend um, app, uh, products that pump or can be poured um, to avoid having to worry about containers. But if you do have a favorite product that's in a container, you'll definitely want to use a spatula and not put your dirty hands in the product. Um, so we're all quite familiar with eyeshadow applicators. The key with these are that you will use one side for one eye and the other side for the other eye. You do not want to risk um, passing any sort of inf infection from one eye to the other. Um, the other very important one is um, we have a mascara wand, also known as a a spoolie. So you're not going to use the wand that comes in the mascara. Instead, you'll use this product. Um, mascaras are really such a breeding ground for bacteria. They, it's a dark, moist place. And you're dealing with um, your eyes, which are such a sensitive location. So for that reason, um, we recommend using these disposable applicators but also replacing your mascara often. When you're not going through treatment, um, you should be replacing your mascara every three months. And when you are going through treatment, 
um, that decreases to to once a month. So we recommend um, uh, that there are you know small mascaras that sometimes you get the travel size or gift with purchase. Um, and this is certainly not the time to invest in some sort of fancy mascara. Um, you don't want to do anything that's going to make it hard to to replace it after every month. Um, so, so keep that in, in mind. Um, if you see on my slide here that there's an icon with the containers and the numbers on it, um, this refers to uh, the period after opening symbol. And this is how long you can use a product um, before it, it goes bad. Um, so on um, this cleanser I have here, you can see it there that it is six months. Now, a great tip is when you open the product that you write uh, the date that you opened it, or maybe even better, write the date when you need to stop using it to help manage um, the, the expiry date. You'll also see that some products like a sunscreen is actually going to have this specific date on it. So it doesn't matter when you opened it. Um, it just matters of um, the specific date, even if you never opened it at all. When you're using products, um, clues that um, it has gone off is changes in color, smell, or consistency. Um, if, if you do notice that there are changes, that you're going to want to stop using it. Um, the final thing you can do for your cosmetic hygiene, which you might welcome this advice, but I don't know if the other people in your household are going to, um, which is no sharing of products. And when you register uh, for the workshop and that kit comes in the mail, I'm sure there'll be lots of people in your household eyeing up your gift, but you can tell them that look good, feel better said for your health and safety no sharing allowed. And really that's something that you can continue on after you're out of treatment. Um, equally important to cosmetic hygiene is sun protection. Uh, when you're going through treatment, you're extra sensitive to the sun. Um, so you need to do yourself to, you need to do your best to protect yourself. I know that when we think about sun protection, many of us think about you know, hot summer days on the beach, but actually UVA and UVB rays are present year round, um, even on cloudy days with 50% of UV lights, um, UV uh, light being scattered. It means that you need to be using sunscreen, whether you're um, under an umbrella, in the shade, or even in a car. Sunscreen is one way to protect yourself. Um, you wanna be using a sunscreen that is 30 SPF or higher. Um, it's going to need to say UVA and UVB and it needs to be reapplied often. I'm gonna tell you a little tidbit that most people don't know and it was really um, such a huge change for me personally. There are two different ways that sunscreens work. One of them, which is the traditional kind that we're used to, is a chemical reaction um, that protects the skin from UV rays. Whereas the other one uses a physical barrier to prevent UV rays from penetrating the skin. The physical barrier is called a mineral sunscreen. And these are great if you find that the regular sunscreen irritates your skin, maybe gives you little bumps, but the mineral sunscreen is um, really great for sensitive skin. As a general rule of thumb, um, what, uh, the order that you apply sunscreen, it should be uh, the first thing that goes on your skin, on your cleansed skin. Then you're gonna give it a few minutes to absorb and then apply any other products after that. Sunscreen's pretty thick though uh, and moisturizing. So you might find that you don't need to put a moisturizer on afterwards. That's a nice segue into my next point that there are some great multi-purpose type products that are um, like a combination of uh, uh, sunscreen or foundation or like a, a BB cream. Just remember that you want to have at least that 
30 SPF or higher. And um, you're going to need to be careful about the expiry dates if there's sunscreen in a product. Uh, a question that we sometimes get in the workshop is, um, I have a um, moisturizer that has a 15 SPF, and then I have a uh, foundation that has a 15 uh, SPF. Um, am I covered in terms of a 30 SPF? You know, adding one, um, adding those two together. And unfortunately, that is not how it works. Um, the other way you can protect yourself from the sun is wearing hats and limiting the amount of exposed skin. There are um, uh, products out there, hats and clothing that have UVA and UVB uh, in, in them. So th those are great. But ultimately, you want to limit the amount of time that you are outdoors, avoiding 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. when the sun is most intense. Um, in terms of skin care, uh, outside of sun protection, which is like the most important thing that you need to be doing for your skin, when we're thinking about what types of products to be using when you're going through treatment, you want to be looking for products that are gentle, moisturizing, and fragrant, fragrant free. Um, your skin is more sensitive when you're going through treatment. Um, this means that you're going to want to avoid uh, exfoliants or scrubs that can be quite aggressive on the skin. And you'll also want to stay away from active ingredients like retinol or AHA, uh, which is alpha hydroxy acid. I know that sounds kind of confusing. So the easiest way to think about it is anything that is labeled as anti-aging is gonna have those active ingredients and you're gonna wanna stay away from uh, right now. Um, instead, look for products that are advertised for sensitive skin and are alcohol free. Um, something we do here in our workshops is women who say, you know, I've had this, my, my favorite skincare product, I've been using it for the last 10 years. I've started treatment and um, I've started to get these reactions. And it is common when you're going through treatment that um, the way your skin tolerates certain products changes because it becomes more sensitive. Um, so just, you know, put that favorite product to the side. Um, uh, you may be able to, you, you'll likely be able to start using it again um, once, once the treatment is complete. So now in terms of, um, you know, the cosmetic techniques um, that we cover in the workshop, I have to say that uh, the skincare and cosmetic workshop, it is not about glamour makeup. It, it is tailored to the needs of someone who's going through treatment. Um, I'm going to share with you um, one of the and it is uh, blush. So I'm going to take my um, cotton ball. You know, a lot of blushes come with uh, a little brush, which you don't want to use when you're going through treatment. I've heard they are great, though, at cleaning out a keyboard. So you can put it to a new purpose. I'm going to use my cotton ball. Um, I'm going to get some product here. Now, in order to figure out where I put this blush, I've got two tricks. Um, one of them is you're going to locate the apples of your cheeks right here. And then you're going to use two finger rule to, um, to make sure you're not getting it too close to your nostril. I can feel that it touches right onto my cheekbone. And I'm just going to put a little bit on there. So if you're someone who is just um, dedicated and committed to your brushes, um, just want to show that you can apply makeup without your brushes using these disposable applicators. You know, I'm really just going for a nice natural look as if maybe I was just on a nice brisk walk um, just to add some nice gl glow to the face. Now, um, the eyebrows really are uh, probably like the most popular or in demand um, step um, of why people uh, attend the skincare workshop, the skincare and cosmetic workshops. 
Eyebrows are really important in how we communicate with others um, and use our facial expressions. Um, if, if they are too high, sh should you lose them and, and you need to um, uh, draw them on, if they're too high, you're gonna look surprised. And if it's too low, you're gonna look angry. Um, so you're gonna wanna familiarize yourself with your brow bone. And that it indicates where on your face they should go, but I'm gonna show you where they start and end. So I've got my eyebrow pencil here and I'm going to just parallel to my nose. Uh, okay, I can't look in the camera. <laughs> um, and right again, parallel to the outside of the eye, I'm gonna do a dot. Now, this pencil is like the same color as my hair, so you're not really gonna be able to see it. Um, but uh, when you're doing it on yourself, you will be able to. The next one is to, deter to determine the arch. Now it's very important that I'm looking straight ahead. I'm gonna place the pencil right parallel to the outside edge of the colored part of my eye, um, like that, the iris. Now I don't actually have a mirror, so I'm just kind of pretending. Um, and then I'm gonna put a mark there and that's gonna mark where the arch is. And then to figure out where the eyebrow ends, you're gonna place the pencil um, on a diagonal against my nostril and then the outside corner of my eye. And then I'm going to look for the brow bone and just do the dot. Now, this does take a little bit of practice. Now, once I have those dots, those landmarks, then I'm gonna fill in the brows using li um, light feather-like strokes. I'm not gonna just draw a line. And I'm gonna be mindful of the fact that um, at, the, at the beginning, the brows really grow straight up and down and uh, it's quite full. And then as you go along, the brows then start growing horizontally. And then right at the end, the brow tapers out. Now you would think, okay, my, uh, the brows are done, but I have two more steps to add. This uh, spoolie, which is uh, used for the mascara um, as well, is great as a brow brush. And you're gonna brush this through. And what this is going to do is going to replicate the texture of hair on um, the drawn on pencil, giving it the illusion of, of hairs, creating some texture. Um, and it's also going to soften it a little bit as well. And if you do have any remaining hairs, it will um, just straighten them out. This is my favorite tip. Um, when you're looking for a, a product, a brow product, um, should you lose your brows, keep in mind that a lot of products that are on the market are made to adhere to existing hairs. Should you lose your brow, you want a product that's going to stick to skin. And a pencil is going to be the best product to do that. It's also great for cosmetic hygiene because you sharpen it time you, uh, before you use it and that helps keep it clean. So um, so you've you've put the pencil on. If you have you know oil or sweat, you might be concerned about that pencil maybe not sticking on or it kind of bleeding a bit. If you use a loose powder, um, you put that over top and it's just a transparent powder that it will help set the brow so it, it stays in place and you don't need to worry about it coming off. With these brows, practice really makes perfect. And remember that between the brows, they are sisters and not twins, that they were not meant to be identical. How am I doing for time? Okay. I'm doing okay. Um, I'm going to start talking about wigs and hair alternatives. Um, this, this is what we uh, cover in our, our wigs and hair alternative workshop. I'm going to give you a sneak 
peak today. The loss of the hair, whether it's partial or complete, is the most visible sign of treatment. Um, whatever you decide for hair alternatives, the choice should be uh, dependent on a blend of lifestyle, versatility, and convenience. You may choose to wear a wig, a hat, scarf, or nothing at all. Like anything new, um, a wig, or even wearing a scarf for that matter, does take some time to get used to. So um, be, be gentle with yourself um, and, and allow some time to gradually get accustomed to, to that feeling on, on your head. When you're choosing a wig, consider whether you want a style and color that replicates what you are used to, or if you wanna try something new. Um, if you do wanna replicate the look you are used to, it's helpful to bring a photo um, to the retailer, to the wig boutique, to show um, the color and style that you're looking for. Choose a wig that is comfortable to wear, easy to style and fits your budget. Um, bring a family member or a friend for support and an honest second opinion. Do not feel pressured to buy a wig immediately. And in fact, most wigs are non-refundable. So you, you definitely want to take your time with that first purchase. Questions you should ask when you're looking for a retailer. Are you experienced working with clients um, who are undergoing chemo-induced hair loss? Is an appointment needed? Do you have a private space for me to try on wigs? Do you have a wide selection of wigs available on hand that can be tried on? Or do they need to be ordered in? What types of products do you carry outside of wigs? Consider how you felt when you were talking with this person. Did they answer your questions directly? Did they give the information that you were looking for? Did they make you feel comfortable? When you are trying on wigs, um, you want to be sure that the retailer is providing you with this nylon hygiene cap. Um, it's kind of like when you're trying on shoes, um, that it keeps you safe and prevents you from catching anything that might be passed uh, from the wig in the event that someone had just tried it on before you. Um, you really wanna make sure the retailer is providing you this hygiene cap. I would say if you go and they don't, that that is a, a, a flag. Um, so when we're thinking about a wig, there are two kind of um, characteristics that, that differentiate wigs. The wig fiber and the wig construction. So, First, let me talk about fiber. There are two different types or mainly two different types of, of wig fibers. There is synthetic and then there is human hair. There are pros and cons that come with both. Synthetic wigs don't require any styling. So they are wash and wear, very low maintenance, but they are heat sensitive, which means that if you wear them while uh, barbecuing, uh, opening up an oven or a dishwasher or um, near a fireplace that they will be severely uh, damaged. On the other hand, human hair wigs behave just like your own hair. So you have the flexibility to style it and however way you want using um, hot tools. Um, but you have to restyle uh, the wig every time you wash it. Human hair wigs are quite durable and feel cooler than a synthetic wigs. Typically human hair, at least the high quality ones, the ones that you want are more expensive than a synthetic wig. I have some wigs here um, and I would show you the difference between human hair and synthetic. The reality is, is that you really can't visibly tell the difference between the two. You could probably feel the difference, but you, um, you can't actually really see the difference. The other thing that impacts cost 
is the construction of the wig. And that uh, is what I'm gonna talk about next. So number one is a machine made wig. What you are seeing in that image and in this wig right here is the wig inside out. Um, so I'll just give you a general like anatomy of the wig. Uh, any wig is that you're going to have a strap, have like a bra strap or an elbow strap. I'm sorry, Emily, I we can't hear you. I just a little part when you start talking about the construction, if you can just start that one over. Sure. Um, before I get into construction, I'll just point out some parts of any wig. Are we good, Alex? Yep, all good. Okay. Um, we've got a like kind of like a bra strap that tightens and loosens, and then you can't really see here, but there are some ear straps um, here, uh, ear tabs um, that are wired. Anyways, on a machine made wig, there are what is called these wets, which are basically curtains of hair that are layered on top of each other. This is great for ventilation, but it certainly does not replicate the way that hairs naturally grow out of our head. As a result, the wig style is quite voluminous. And actually you can even see the light uh, coming through a, a little bit there. Um, and so the hair kind of just covers the cap um, at the front, the bangs cover. Should I pull my hair up? I know you cannot see it really very well. You would actually see the wig. So you need to have the, the bangs to cover it. You're used to a voluminous look. A machine made is a great option for you. Next is called a, a mono uh, filament wig. And actually like the image on the screen probably shows this better. We have the machine made wet on the sides, but on the front here is a transparent type green. And each hair uh, is almost hand tied to grow out of uh, uh, the green replicates the way that uh, grows, which allows, flip it, um, you to actually part the wig wherever you'd like. Um, this wig style is not exactly the same wig that you see on the picture, so it's hard to show the parts, but I can assure you, you can move it and part it wherever you like. This type of wig also passes what we call the waiter test. And that is that if someone is standing uh, above you and looking down, that this transparent screen provides the illusion that the hair is growing directly out of your head. And then there's also this feature called a lace front. And I can pull the hair back here and clip it, and it would actually appear as if the hair is growing out of a natural hairline. Um, Sorry, Emily? Yes. Could you uh, repeat the last little part? The sound was a little foggy when uh, things sure. were in front of the camera. The, Thank you so much. The lace front gives the illusion that the hairs are growing um, out of a natural hairline, that you could wear your hair back and um, that it looks like it's growing out of your scalp. Wigs should fit comfortably, but also secure. When you're positioning the wig on your head, you can use the four finger rule, which you start at your eyebrows and that four fingers up will indicate where your hairline begins. And that is where the wig should sit. Um, the positioning of the wig is going to be one of the key determinants in uh, giving the illusion of a, a natural hair. If it's not positioned properly, that's going to be a telltale sign that you're wearing a wig. 
um, there are things that can be done to improve the fit of a wig, um, that a wig fitter can use a sewing technique to spin in the back of the wig. Um, if, it, if it is not fitting properly, you can also use um, a, a wig liner, not to be confused with the hygiene cap, or a grip band that provides a little bit of a cushion layer between your sensitive scalp and the wig and also grips. Um, these wigs are come with a lot of hair, which may not replicate what you are used to. To customize the wig and make it look a little bit more um, specific to what, how you're used to looking, um, there uh, are wig fitters who are specialized in cutting wigs and that they can go and thin it a little bit to match your natural look. They can also trim bangs a little bit. They, they can only do tweaks. They cannot completely change styles. Make sure someone is experienced in cutting wigs, which is different than cutting hair. Um, hair uh, wigs do not grow back. So you wanna make sure um, you're dealing with someone who is experienced. This is another transition, a hair wig, um, where it's kind of just a half wig and you can put this cap or a cap over top. These are cooler than a regular wig. They're easier to fit. And um, they also retail at a much lower pr uh, price point than a full wig. Okay, I've got 20 minutes remaining, but I will make sure I end early um, and we have time for practice. I mean, not practice, questions. Um, there are so many options when it comes to uh, head coverings, uh, caps, turbans, hats, and scarves. Um, the benefit is that these are things that you might already have around your house, or you can check out your local wig boutique, uh, do some online shopping, or anywhere where accessories are sold to find the perfect item for you. Um, when you're thinking about head coverings, color, fabric, and the degree to which you want to customize it or how much work you wanna do are gonna be key considerations. Um, look for um, items in your favorite color or patterns. You probably have a pretty good idea of what colors you feel your best in. Um, you'd be amazed how much a pop of color can um, complement your skin tone. In terms of fabric, um, if you're thinking about doing a, a cap, um, bamboo cotton is known for its antibacterial qualities and the ability to keep you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Um, they often come, they'll be like 95% bamboo cotton and then 5% spandex, just to give you a little bit of stretch uh, so the, the item can conform nicely to your head. Um, and then when we're thinking about scarves, ideally um, you want a fabric that doesn't slip. So a rayon, polyester or soft cotton blend. But I am gonna show you if you have some favorite silk scarves, how you can incorporate them. So I'm going to start here with, um, we're probably familiar with these fabrics to um, the show Survivor. Um, they go by Gators. There's also like a very popular brand name. So this is a bamboo cotton and I'm just gonna put it on uh, my head. These comes in all different colors and I'm gonna show a few different looks but there's so many different ones. I'm used to wearing kind of a, a ponytail or a, a bun on the top of my head. So I can replicate that look just by tying a knot and um, making a little bun. And this is a nice, um, simple cap, easy to get out the door. I can also um, go for one of those kind of like slouchy looks where I am just tucking it in the back and I'll show you what that looks like. Now, if you're just looking for a nice, simple cap, 
we're gonna do what's called the candy wrapper twist. So it's just straight up. I'm just twisting it once, then I'm folding it back. And it provides a nice um, little twist, I'll show you. Um, and some, some volume. And I can use this nice bamboo cotton as a base um, to add um, scarfs or other items. Uh, I could use, uh, I have a little like flower, but if I was going to a special event or something that that would be a mini bag um, using brooches and that kind of thing. But let's say I've got a scarf and I've got a really big square scarf here. Now, if I fold that in half, it's gonna become a triangle. Okay, so I'm taking the long ties to my sides and I'm just going to just simply tie a knot in the back. Now, of course, you know, if I'm doing this at home, I'm gonna, you know, perfect this, make this nice and smooth. I'm going to tuck in that remaining piece and then I could even, I could let this hang or I could make a little rosette at the back. So I feel pretty secure with that base that this is not going anywhere. You can imagine with some earrings, how um, that would definitely just add to the look. I have just a long scarf here. I could also use that just to tie it around here, um, just to add a little bit of color and dimension. Now, if you're looking at me and thinking that looks like far too much work, which, you know, I kind of just like to get out the door. We've got some simpler options for you. This is just a, a simple cap. Um, you can get this where wigs are sold. And um, there is lots of nice ruching he, here at the front and at the top. You don't um, really want something that's gonna be super flat to your head. And you'll notice with the headwear, you will have um, half, it, you'll have your ears covered or just showing a little bit of ears where wigs, you would have your ears completely open. If you're thinking, I want to do a little bit of work, there is um, this type of cap that has these long ties. And I put that on and I've got these long ties, I'm going to cross them over, come to the top, and then tie a little bow and let those ties hang. Now, I would like to bring attention to the fact that, you know, this is a black, um, this is black with just some gold design on it. And I actually feel better in the bright color. I think it um, is better for my skin tone that I actually prefer, even though I love to wear black, I'd, I'd prefer to have a brighter color next to my face. So there's lots of different options out there based off of your own uh, personal preferences. And in the um, wigs and hair alternative workshops, we show more layering and hats and, and we show lots of different options for you. Um, so, you know, as I embark on the end of this presentation, I hope that you are at the point where you're asking, well, how do I participate? I wanna go to one or, or some of these workshops that you can register online at lgfb.ca. Um, or call our 1-800 our number. 
Um, before I say goodbye, I want to um, announce um, something very new and exciting that is available to you that next year marks our 30th anniversary. And um, to honor this uh, milestone, we have created a magazine um, which is available online filled with um, heartwarming stories, useful tips, um, and experts that walk you through uh, skincare, fitness, scarf tying, cosmetics, mindfulness, and more. Uh, keep an eye out. Uh, we will have hard copies uh, becoming available uh, next year, but the digital version actually has videos and extra resources um, so you want to be sure to, to check that out. That's available on our website, lgfb.ca. In the end, whether it's a, a live workshop or a digital magazine to read uh, on your own time, Look Good, Feel Better is here to remind you that you are part of a greater community of support. And especially as we gather here today um, with the national conference, we feel the benefits of being together, even in this kind of digital space. So um, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to, to spend this um, time with you today and um, happy to answer any questions. Absolutely, thank you so much, Emily, for sharing your expertise and insight with all of us today. Um, so we'll now move into our question and answer period. So if you haven't done so already, be sure to use the question box in your Zoom webinar panel to type your questions. Um, and we're gonna do our best to try to get to as many questions as possible today. So the first question that we'll jump to, and this might be something that you've already addressed, but maybe a piece of clarification. Um, how does one go about receiving products to practice some of the tips you've shared with us today? Oh, that's a great question. Um, that for anyone who attends our skincare and cosmetic workshop that they will receive uh, the kit and we'll ship it directly um, to your house and you can register online or through our 1-800 number. We offer workshops uh, like daytime uh, and evening so there's lots of variety to fit whatever works with your schedule. Awesome, thank you so much for clarifying that. So we have a fan in the audience who have participated in a number of these workshops. Uh, oh, they've yay. Helpful, especially for the scalp care and hair loss. However, they do are wondering, um, would you consider doing a scalp and hair post-treatment? Uh, they're currently finding it difficult to know what to do with their scalp to keep it healthy and promote hair growth after treatment. Mm, I would love to refer um, the members of the group here today to one of our online resources um, that we had an oncodermatologist, which is um, a specialist who deals with the side effects, the, the skin and, and hair side effects of treatment. And he talked about a few different things to encourage hair regrowth and scalp care. And I can actually share this link in the chat box right now. You can either uh, uh, read the content or you can watch the different clips. Should I put that in the chat or the Q&A? I would say put it in the chat so that we uh, can give access to all of our attendees today. Thank you so much. All right, next question. Uh, might be a similar answer, but uh, somebody's skin has been negatively impacted by chemotherapy. Um, they report that there is, it is dry, wrinkly, and sagging, unlike before chemo. Um, so they're looking for any tips or advice for somebody whose skin has been impacted by chemotherapy. Absolutely. I'm going to refer you um, to another piece. In our magazine, we have um, some info on what I call more like advanced skincare. Um, and it is on page 34 where it talks about, you know, all those things that I said not to use while you're going through treatment. Once you're done treatment, your skin can then tolerate some of those active ingredients that can bring some um, added moisture and suppleness back to the skin. Awesome, thank you so much. 
Um, one individual wants to know if there are sunscreens that have some cancerous agents um, in them, and if so, potentially what sunscreens might be better for them to use. I talked about the two different types of sunscreen. That's all the products that we have in our kit are regulated under Health Canada, um, who uh, approves what products are safe to use. So we would defer back to uh, Health Canada or a great question to ask your healthcare team. Awesome. Okay, so for uh, oral chemo, how does one go about managing facial edema? Um, are Lasix a best option or is permanent makeup uh, such as eyebrows safe? That is definitely a question you'd want to ask your healthcare team. Um, when you have a compromised immune system, um, you definitely want to check and see if, if doing something invasive like that is safe. Uh, I do stand by our eyebrow steps, um, but I know that that's um, maybe not going to be the right uh, solution for everybody. Um, if you are experiencing some side effects uh, from treatment on your skin, um, Dr. Max Sauter, uh, the oncodermatologist, uh, talks about um, how actually the side effects on the skin um, indicate that the treatment is working. So that is a positive. But um, if your uh, primary team is not able to support that you can ask for a referral to an oncodermatologist who really specializes in side effects on, on the skin. Awesome, that's an excellent resource that I'm sure some of our, our community can definitely use. Um, we have another question are, do you have any insights into teeth whitening while in treatment? I have, I, I do not. I, I, do, I do not, um, I would say again to talk to your, your doctor about that. Cool. Um, okay, next question coming in. We've got lots of questions. Thank you so much for everybody submitting. Uh, do you have any tips for skincare with people who have a chronic cancer and experience daily uh, slash oral treatment? Um, I do not. Okay. I, I can add a tidbit that Max talks about in terms of moisturizing the, the skin that um, the different lotions, but you know, the difference between a lotion, a cream and an ointment um, or even an oil that they're on a spectrum. So oil is actually the least moisturizing product and ointments are the most moisturizing products. So um, a lot of us use uh, lotions. If you find that that is not moisturizing enough, that you're gonna wanna move up to a cream. And if a cream is not moisturizing enough um, to move up to an ointment. Awesome, thank you. Uh, next question, is there anywhere where you can get free wigs or headscarves? Oh, great question. Um, I'd like to refer to the um, Canadian Cancer Society service locator that they actually have um, a, a wig uh, lending bank um, that is available there. But if you go on their service locator, you can find out if there's actually one that is closest to you. Uh, without knowing where people are, are from, it's, it's hard to, to say specifically, but that is a good place to start um, because that's a great resource that is out there and nationally, that's a go-to. Awesome, that's really, really great to know. Thank you so much for uh, passing along that resource to us. Um, another question for those who are finished with their wig, uh, do you have any suggestions on where somebody can take them? Um, that, that the Canadian Cancer Society's lending bank is a possibility. Now, sometimes they um, reach their full inventory um, so uh, I, if, if that national agency isn't accepting them, then maybe there's a local one. Great. Um, depending on where you're from, feel free to reach out to me. I kind of know where things are in Ontario, but I have coworkers in um, all the different regions and they will know uh, best what is in your community. Awesome. 
Um, another question in our chat box, is it necessary to use a hygiene cap when putting on a wig? If it's your own wig, no, you, you do not need to, but just when you're in a retail environment, once it becomes your own wig, you don't need to, to worry about that. It's kind of like when you're trying on shoes. Awesome. Um, another participant has asked, do you have any recommendations on what mascaras are safe for use? Oh, uh, I'm glad you asked that because I forgot to mention when you're going through treatment, we don't recommend waterproof mascaras that um, they are really hard to get off and you're doing a lot of rubbing and you certainly don't want to risk any um, like uh, abrasions or risk um, if you only have a few hairs remaining, potentially them being too aggressive and them falling out. Awesome, that's definitely a good point to note because sometimes you have both the waterproof and the non-waterproof mascaras out there and yeah, that's awesome, cool. Um, we have one participant who has been diagnosed with AML last year and is one year post stem cell transplant. Um, they're asking what they can do to potentially remove flat warts that developed, especially in the chest area and under breast. Um, and this might be another question to repeat. Yeah, we, we are actually non medical. So we don't in interfere with uh, patients, medical treatment, make any specific claims um, that I would, yeah, certainly refer that back to the healthcare team. Awesome. And I have another great question for you. Could you repeat the name of the 30th anniversary magazine? Um, it's, it's, it's called our 30th edition um, magazine. I can put the link in the chat box. It's just called Look Good, Feel Better. <laughs> awesome. Okay, one more question just popped in. Uh, you mentioned staying away from facial scrubs. Do you have a recommendation for some cleaners, um, mm. a foam, a bar, or a toner, etc.? Uh, we like to recommend just a nice creamy cleanser. And if you use um, like um, a baby washcloth, that that is going to um, help remove any um, skin, dead skin cells, um, that that's really enough um, exfoliant that, that you need. Awesome. Thank you so much for answering these. And I believe that takes us to the end of our question period. If there are no more questions following the ones that were already answered. Okay. Uh, thank you once again, Emily, for being here with us today and for answering the important questions from our audience. Um, we also would like to make a thank you to those who have made this conference possible. Um, could I get you to switch the slide to the next? Oh, absolutely. Oh, perfect. Um, so our marquee sponsors, Estella's, as well as Abby, AstraZeneca, Bristol Myers Squibb, Janssen, Jazz Pharmaceuticals, Merck, Novartis, Paladin, and Pfizer, thank you so much for uh, the support. We couldn't have made this conference possible without um, your generous support. Uh, next slide, please. Awesome. And before we sign off, we would like to remind you all that you are all not alone. We are all here for you. Please reach out to us for more information about any of our services by calling toll-free or by email listed here on your screen. Um, and although this is our last presentation for the Living Well with a Blood Cancer Conference, you can still watch all of the presentations and all of the recordings on our websites, bloodcancers.ca. Uh, have a wonderful day, everybody, and stay safe. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. <laughs>